Hello and welcome back to MathsWithDavid.com. We're continuing to work through the February, March 2019 IGCSE Paper 4. That's the uh, second extended paper, the Paper 4. And we're on now to question 4. So let's carefully read through the question. The diagram shows an incomplete scale drawing of a marketplace, A, B, C, D, where D is on C, X. The scale is one centimetre represents five metres. D lies on CX such that angle DAB equals 75 degrees. On the diagram, draw the line AD and mark the position of D. OK, so we've been told about D that it's on the line CX and we've been told that we have an angle DAB equals 75 degrees. Now, of course, the way angles are written, the letter in the middle is the, is the centre of the angle, and the two letters on the outside are the arms of the angle. So A is the centre of the angle, and the arms are B and D. So what we need to do, we need to mark an angle from the line BA of 75 degrees that our point D is going to be on. So we get our protractor, and we put the centre of the protractor at the point A. And we make sure that the line of the protractor is going down the line AB. Once that's happening, we can count from our zero degrees, making sure the zero is towards the point B. We can count up towards 75 degrees. So we count up in tens to 70 and then a further five to 75 degrees. And we mark nice and clearly that point. Remember, the examiner is going to be having a lot of scripts and want to find it very quickly. So we mark the point as clearly as we can and then we join up the line from A through that point and we must make sure that it goes as far as the line CX and we must mark on that point where it hits CX as D because the question specifically said mark the position of D. Once we've done that it says find the actual length of the side BC of the marketplace. Now if you print out this exam script every print is going to get a slightly different length. So the exam will be based on the, the standard printing when it's done. But all you need to do is to take your ruler and to carefully measure this line BC. So it means you have to match up your zero point on your ruler with either C or with B. Make sure that's absolutely uh, on, the, on the end point. And then make sure that the ruler is lined up absolutely on the line. And if you do that, you should be able to count across the ruler and just read off. On mine, I've measured it as 9.1 centimetres. So we've told here a scale that one centimetre equals five metres. So I'm going to have to multiply my 9.1 by five, and that will give me the answer in metres. 9.1 times five is 45.5. So I've given 45.5 metres as my answer. Yours might be slightly different, but as long as you've measured it based on your printout, you'll get the full marks. And then part C, let's read carefully through part C. In this part, use a ruler and compasses only. Street sellers are allowed in the part of the marketplace that is more than 35 metres from A and nearer to C than to B and nearer to CD than to BC. On the diagram, construct and shade the region where street sellers are allowed. So the first column, use a ruler and compasses only, what that means is we can't be using a protractor or drawing round things to measure angles or to find circles. It's a construction problem uh, and there's, there's very specific reasons for making that limitation. So let's take each of the three conditions one at a time. More than 35 metres from A. Well, we've been given a scale where 5 metres equals 1 centimetre. So our 35 metres we have to divide by 5 to give 7 and it will be 7 centimetres on our drawing. So on our drawing 7 centimetres from A, A is a point, and if we have a fixed distance from a point, that is effectively a circle, because a circle has a, a, a set length from the centre at all the points on the outside of the circle. So we centre our compass on A, and we make sure our compass is set to 7 centimetres. Once it's set to 7 centimetres, we can draw a big circle, it will go off the paper, but we just go around the side that's going to be relevant to us, and draw that on. Secondly, nearer to C than B. 
So if we look at BC, in order to be nearer to C than B, what we need to do is we need to draw a perpendicular bisector of CB and look at just that side of the perpendicular bisector that is closer to C. So to draw a perpendicular bisector, what we need to do is we need to draw arcs on either side of the line and join them up. So we set our compass at the full length of the line from B to C and what we do is we, we preserve that length to one side of the line and draw one arc. We then move our compass so it's centred on C instead of B and has the same length and draw an arc on the other side. Now a lot of people then go on to draw a line but we don't know where this is going to hit the line BC. So what we really need to do is these same arcs on the other side of the line. So we set our centre on B at our length at C and draw one arc, and we set our centre at C at our length at B and draw another arc. And then what we actually need to do is to join up these two crosses where the two arcs meet. And if we join them up, where they hit the, the, the line will be the centre of the line, and we'll have a perpendicular bisector of the line. So we're going to need some arrows on here to show which side of the line we're dealing with. So when it comes to shading, we know which side to shade. So it's closer to C than B. So all of these arrows are kind of pointing up to the right of this line. And obviously on our, our, on our arc, our circle before in the first part, we also have arrows pointing up off that circle. Uh, and so in our third part, nearer to CD than to BC, well, if we look, CD is one line, and BC is another line, in order to be nearer to one than to the other, what we need to do this time is to bisect the angle. We need to bisect the angle BCD. Uh, and so bisecting an angle is, re is what we need to do is we need to draw an arc on our line CD of any length and draw the same arc with the same length on our line CB. This will give us two points. What we then do is between those two arcs, we then put our compass as a centre on one of the arcs and as a length as the other arc and we draw a second arc in the coming out from, from the, the, the point where the extension of our, of our arc is. And we then put the centre on the other point and draw a second arc and where those two arcs join up, we then join that to the centre point C and this will be our bisector. So I'm going to do a separate video on constrictions to go through that more clearly because obviously it will, be, it will be easier if we specify with a letter exactly which point we're dealing with each time. But hopefully on the diagram you can follow through the process that we're following there. We then join that arc up to point C and draw a straight line and that's the uh, bisector of the angle BCD. And we've been told that it's nearer to D CD than to BC so we're on the top left side of that line. And like I say, we draw small arrows in order to mark that on. And now what we're going to do is shade the region that satisfies all three of those conditions. So it has to, it's the, it's the strictest of all three because it has to satisfy the first condition and the second condition and the third condition where we've got the arc and the line uh, crossing. We go to the, the furthest point. So, so what we're going to shade here is it's a bit of the line it's a bit of the arc, and then it's the line, and then it's the stricter line, which is the angle bisector. And we shade all that region. And then in part D, it says, write the scale of the drawing in the form 1 to n. Well, this is 1 centimetre to 5 metres. We need the units to be the same, so that's going to be 1 centimetre to 500 centimetres. So it's 1 to 500. We basically strip out the units once the units are the same. Now looking at the marks for your line AD, you've got one mark for drawing the correct line and a second mark for marking the position of D on the, on the line CX. Part B, find the actual length of the side BC. Uh, we got, uh, as long as we measured it correctly, we got the, we got the two marks. Uh, we got one mark for measuring it correctly and a second mark for multiplying that by the, the five. And, and give it that you were already given the meters there in, in the answer. And then we've got seven marks on the construction bit. We've got two marks for drawing the circle, one for drawing a circle centered at A, and one for it having the correct radius. Then for the bisection of the line uh, BC, we also got two marks one mark for correct bisecting line, and a second mark for having arcs that show you've, correct, you've constructed it correctly. 
for bisecting the angle, also we've got two marks, one for the correct line and one for having the arcs where they should be. And then there was a further mark for the shading being in the correct position. And then we got one last mark for correctly saying one to 500 as the, as the scale of the drawing.